Okay, so this is a little bit of a vlog, a little bit of a philosophical insight for the more mature dudes. One of the biggest, uh, the challenge, above all challenges, as far as I am concerned, it's particularly true of the older guy, but I think it also has quite a lot of relevance from it is too late. All right, too late, mate. I've snuck in a plug. I've segued into a plug. We're only kind of 30 seconds into the video. But I, I, this is a tremendous relevance and importance because in a whole variety of ways we tend mentally to limit ourselves by ideas and one of the most seductive ideas that a guy can find himself confronted with that can weasel its way into his mind over time is the idea that it is too late you know I'm over the hill um, you know the, the, the common conception is that as you get older it becomes more difficult to do things to change you know you've heard that haven't you ah oh, it's too late to change now um, now I, <laughs> I've come across this d dilemma um, in as I say guys that I've been speaking to uh, in conversations uh, over dinner over drinks as well as guys who've contacted me because they wanted a Skype conversation and as I say w one that I've recently had on Skype is this idea that he, uh, he was too old to attract younger women um, he was in his 30s is in his 30s and it was such an interesting com kind of kind of a conversation because you know he's not necessarily looking to date really young girls you know just girls in their 20s and um, and he's in his mid to late 30s and and yet at the end of the Skype call we had an interesting conversation I was like well have you got any questions you want to ask me the first time we'd met and a chap in a completely different country that I've never visited and so it's, it's really interesting speaking to dudes, you know, all four corners of the globe about uh, these issues. It's such a, obviously a universal common issue for guys. And, you know, I found myself just kind of, it, this did not compute for me. Uh, I have, of all the challenges that I face, limiting beliefs and so on, the idea that I'm too old to attract younger women has simply uh, got hardly a hold on me at all. Hardly a hold on me at all. Um, the kind of the simple age thing, um, and this just come. This is just born of practical experience. This is born of taking action and finding out whether it's the truth. Yeah. Don't just. I mean, well, you know, do take other guys' word for it if, if they're genuine and they're speaking from experience, real experience. Uh, but but you know, but also test it out be scientific be a, a man of action and go out there and discover whether or not this is true or not I mean what have you got to lose do you know what I mean uh, if it's true well you've tried and you've laid the issue to rest and you you know put up your old Parker Knoll armchair and you get your pipe and you know you take up gardening and you watch a lot of television and you know okay you can at least relax as the as you know the, the curtain begins to fall on your uh, sexual life um but you know it might turn out that it's you kind of pierced this lie this subtle weasel exposed it as a fraudster as an imposter um, and that's a wonderful result too but of course the worst place to live in is where you're in doubts about the issue so you know take action and find out well yeah, uh, the risk of blowing my own trumpet over the years I've taken action to find out what the answer to that question is and you know read too late mate read 52 first dates they are genuinely sincere uh, stories and anecdotes from the trenches which give the lie to that idea you know 
give the lie to that idea. And in fact, I've uh, I had I've actually been in situations where, frankly, I felt that there was one girl in 52 First States who was in her underwear in my bedroom, and I just felt uh, she's just too young. <laughs> I'll get grief from guys for that. I just felt a little bit too kind of a bunk paternal kind of, I didn't feel the right vibe. And so I, I didn't sleep with her. And, you know, I, ju I just, um, um, that's just one example of a dozen of them. You know, not, not every girl that, you know, I've approached who's like, let's say 20 years younger than me is uh, has you know reciprocated um, but it's amazing how few haven't reciprocated I mean, it's amazing how uh, and I've you know, approached thousands of girls at least two or three thousand and I must have had at least 200 odd dates I would think first dates or 150 or something it's amazing how little uh, this has been an issue and it, it does, it's such an interesting journey of self-discovery, and I do encourage you to go on it, that, that, that the ideas around um, our projections of our ideas on the way women think has so little to do with you being fat, you being ugly, you being old, you, you, know, uh, you not having a high status career or, or a fancy car. Um, and how much of it is down to how you're making the girl feel. Uh, whether you are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, I bet you can think right now of an older dude who's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and it's like chick crack. And I bet you can think of younger guys who like, you know, they've kind of already gone to seed and they're only just into their thirties, do you know what I mean? You know, the, the, this, and girls, find that genuinely sexually attractive yeah they're not looking for the same things as we are so don't project your stuff on them uh, this also is true of uh, again uh, just bringing to mind another conversation I've had with the dude of guys who uh, you know are in their 50s and they may uh, no, have never had a long-term relationship okay and, and they may feel that the odds are stacked against them. They haven't had the, um, the kind of positive reference experiences is often what it's all about in your mind. And that, you know, they're kind of stuck in a place where they can't do it. And that, that's, you know, that's, that's a tricky area where, you know, because we tend to, in life, a build on you know the sort of virtuous circle of success uh, and if we haven't sort of had that for whatever reason we then we then approach the idea of the we approach the possibility of us having success uh, with you know skepticism let's say and but just you know just have a look at that too uh, you, I'm sure you, you could find any anecdotes and examples of guys, you know, I remember talking to my tennis coach about, he was like, oh yeah, I've been to a, he'd been to a wedding so he couldn't make a lesson, he, would, he was telling me about the chap who, who'd married this ghost, yeah, I could never, um, we never thought that he would ever uh, get married. You know, uh, it was it, it, my tennis coach is fifty odd, so I guess this guy was around about the same age in his social circle, um, and yet he did. He he actually found that there was somebody at work, a younger girl at work, and suddenly overnight his world was flipped round before you know it. We'd all been invited to the wedding, so you know if you can find even just one anecdote out there of where it's worked, clearly. It must be at least a little bit of a weasel that says, because I haven't had a positive re reference experience of the lifetime of long-term relationships, therefore I can't have a long-term relationship now. And at what, what, what point, if we're kind of logical about it, does, does, uh, at what point does that possibility get ruled out? The idea that I'm not going to get into daytime approach and learn this stuff again to dating because 
you know, I haven't had, I've had 20 years without a long-term or proper relationship. And, and so it can't kind of happen. At what point do you decide that, it, was it five years, was it 10 years, was it 15 years? What point does that suddenly flip around into being an impo- a possibility into an impossibility? If you are honest with yourself, you might discover that it's just an idea that's just saying to you, it's kind of a random, phasey, a hazy, foggy kind of a gloomy kind of a way. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a motion that, uh, that gets hold of you. So it doesn't really have any reason or logic to be, what's the word, um, to have any sort of binding power over you other than the fact that you're giving it energy by believing it, by repeating it in your mind. Um, so, you know, and you know, at, at, at what point does a guy, it, it, what if a guy's had a, one relationship that only lasted six months and that was more recent? Does that just then disqualify him from having an 18 month relationship with a girl now? You know, or he had a longer term relationship when he was younger, but he has there's a long period of time in which he hasn't had a, a, a long term relationship more recently. You know. uh, it, it, when you start to analyse and to rationalise the situation, you discover that these ideas are phantom ideas. And really, you're not going to break free from them unless you do start to hold them up to the light of day either by talking about the issues with dudes, yeah, very healthy, got people you trust, very important, producing a video series on women and dating, very good way, I have to do a little bit of preparation, reflect on what I'm going to speak about in these vlogs, um, or, you know, even better, actually taking action, dragging yourself by the scruff of your neck out into the world, and, and again, as I said earlier, putting it to the test. So uh, even, you might even go out into the world just sort of doing some research on uh, guys who have spent a lifetime as relationship virgins, whether or not it's now too late for them. And so th- this is a, um, a, 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 a my a, a, a sort of, challenge or limiting belief if you like at the moment is an interesting one because I have over the last year I've had um, many relationships well barely barely that with perhaps four genuinely attractive girls these are girls who I've had two three four five dates with um, 15 20 years my junior genuinely attracted to them, uh, um, interested in long-term or longer-term relationship, often have um, got physical to a point, kissing, making out, etc., etc., clothes, even, even clothes coming off, but they haven't kind of progressed into a, 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 fully, a full sort of a sexual relationship. And so you have this, uh, I have this idea that, you know, um, it's almost like when I'm closest to the mountain, it seems steepest. This idea that, well, oh, damn it, you know, think that uh, failure has reared its ugly head not once, not twice, but three or four times. Um, and I now find myself in a situation with a, a couple of girls. Um, it's, 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 it's absolutely kind of magical how the universe goes on giving. You know, even after those failures I've had, uh, I've now found myself in exactly the same situation. It's as almost as if actually the universe is giving you opportunities to correct yourself to transcend your limiting beliefs. You know, it's, it's a kind of a quite a beautiful thing in a way that the universe provides you with opportunities to get over your sticking points. Perhaps this, perhaps this is true of any, in every area of life. It's just we take a long time to wake up, don't we? 
as often as not. Often we don't want to look at our past failures and eyeball them and learn from them and that's why they then become failures. They're not failures if we eyeball them and learn from them, yeah, it goes without saying. So that's my particular kind of challenging or limiting beliefs at the moment. Um, finally, there's also uh, guys who are in long-term relationships and are perhaps are feeling stuck. Now, this is a tricky area. <sighs> you know, uh, I've met a load of guys, a lot of guys who are kind of almost like the victims of success as far as learning, dating and approach skills are concerned. They've had success, they've wanted it kind of a lot, uh, and then they've had a sexual relationship and it is, you know, flowered into something more, but they don't quite feel the connection afterwards. And then they have these, uh, but they like the affection they're getting from the girls, um, they may or they may not like the sex, actually. They may not like the sex, actually, as often as not, after the initial conquest. Um, and then they, they may discover that they don't, that the girl's a bit crazy or, you know, is um, a bit henpecked and she's a bit needy. And then they feel kind of paternal towards them or, or rather, you know, that, that, that kicks into their masculine side. You know, we've got these masculine things, guys, where we want to protect. A girl would dump us, you know, in a heartbeat if she didn't find us attractive. But we tend to look after girls uh, in, uh, in relationships, even the crazy ones, and, um, and we go on looking after them for too long. You know, for goodness gracious sake, this is your life. It's, you know, this is the rest, 20, next 20, 30 years of your life. Um, but you just find it very difficult to pull the plug on it, don't you? Um, so you you have this kind of what I like to think of the victim of success syndrome, and uh, that and what's interesting is particularly if you start introducing to your introducing a girl to your friends and your family, you find there's the pressure. The, 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 the social pressure on you uh, walking her down the aisle and getting hitched and then you start to feel a shit and guilty if you don't. Um, wow, and so that is, uh, now, you know, from a more mature dude in his 40s or 50s, he may just simply feel that the clock is ticking, that there's not much t time left. <laughs> and it's, it's a real powerful pressure a guy may have ideas about his status in life, about the sort of his, his, his own opinion about himself in terms of, of success and so on, and that may play into ideas about, well, I've got to settle, you know, I'm not going to find anything better. Um, it's a difficult one to address this because I'm, a lot of me, you know, is jealous of these guys. A big part of me is very jealous of these guys they've often found attractive women who are a lot younger than them, who you'd, you know, you'd give your right arm for if you were a long-term single guy. Um, by the same token, I think, you know, the, 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 the question that comes to mind is, if, uh, are you just prevaricating and procrastinating and you're not able to find the bulls and the courage to pull the plug, yeah? Because I feel that, you know, in, in life you should be, as, you know, as a guy, you should be becoming more and more free, and that especially is true of how you're feeling in a relationship. Uh, you shouldn't be feeling more and more imprisoned and I think if you are feeling more and more imprisoned by a relationship, for goodness gracious sake, uh, act now, yeah, before it's too late. Not just for your sake, but for her sake. She might be hitting the 30s wall or something. And if you're just stringing it out indefinitely, 
And then if you do actually get married because of social pressures, and if you do then, you know, you could then find yourself in quite a uh, <laughs> an happy situation for life. Now look, there are also cases where guys are just, you know, and I've, 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 I can think of another example here. You know, guys are just, well, I haven't yet sowed my wild oats. I don't feel I've got really good at this stuff. I'm still attracted to a lot of girls. Yeah, but are you gen is he a genuinely attractive girl? Do you like her? Do you enjoy her company? Yeah, well, fucking well get married. Or get into a long-term relationship. Uh, do you know what I mean? So you have to cal cal calibrate. You have to... Um, uh, be, you know, acquire the self knowledge, uh, uh, look at yourself in the mirror, and ask yourself the question of, well, where am I in, in this relationship? I'm procrastinating, or am I just hankering after more attractive birds when really I'm very happy with this girl and let's just move on with the rest of my life? Yeah. Clear is in both situations. You're making a clear decision, an inner mental decision. Um, and as I say, the, pre the the pressure is is on for the for the you know for a guy in his forties, his fifties, or his sixties. But there are plenty of guys in their forties, fifties, and sixties who don't have the, this hang up at all, uh, and enjoy feminine energy, and perhaps aren't interested in marriage and long term relationship, uh, and who. You know, I've met one or two of them who just seem to be happily kind of cruising and gaining altitude, even as it, even as they're getting towards the graveyard, um, which is isn't that an inspiring and beautiful thing? Now I'm going to go a little bit woo woo on you here because I'm just looking at this major life challenge or issue or problem I'm just uh, uh, and it goes quite deep because when you look under the surface here you've got you know ideas that may you have been you might have been attracted to for a long time sentences it's interesting the word sentence it's like a prison sentence sentences in your mind that have been imprisoning you um, and uh, it may be that you feel, well, you know how you're playing a game and it's towards the end of the game uh, and it's like, well, I might as well give up because the game's nearly over and I'm not going to win, there's not enough time. There's often that kind of uh, idea, that sentence that's operating. Um, it's interesting, I watched a, a, I like squash and I watched a squash match a world championship final and yeah this guy was winning best of five uh, winning in the third uh, game and he'd won the first two and it was like uh, just kind of throwing the towel you thought about the other squash player I mean you know just you're not going to be able to climb that mountain um, but it was it was amazing not only did he climb the mountain it, the, the final game was like almost a whitewash. This guy just flipped it around 180 degrees. You know, sport's a brilliant example of this, of, how, of, of, of the, um, the possibilities, of the, the way that you can just shake free of kind of the wrong uh, thinking about a situation. Um, and and that's, those are the most amazing sporting events. And why do we get so uh, thrilled by those, why do we watch sport, why, why do we live for those moments, you know when a football team comes back from the grave for nil down at half time, I seem to remember um, there's a, f a famous uh, football match, um, either the World Cup, the European Championships um, a, a few years ago, you know, where you could not believe that that could happen. And uh, you kind of wonder that there was probably a moment when that person or that team was like, yeah, you know what, you know, I've, I'm, I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to say that, well, it's too late, mate. Um, I, I, I can't kind of eliminate that thought. I can't meditate my way away from that thought into some heavenly place and transcend it. 
it's going to come in, but I'm not going to entertain it. In instead, uh, I'm going to do some work, take a step in the opposite direction, give some my attention to um, a, perhaps another sentence like, well, you know, this is where the, the, the this is why I'm talking about action, um, critical um, thinking. You know, talking to buddies, throwing a light on the situation, seeing whether it's really that really is the truth of the situation. That it is too late. It's interesting with life that you know we think that um, where there's a limited amount of time, then we might as well throw in the towel. Um, I just as I digress to a physical analogy or metaphor for this, I had uh, a, a, a disc, a protruding disc in my lower back that popped out and I thought that was like five years of pain and agony and about seven or eight different medical professionals, some acupuncturists, the chiropractors, osteopaths, the physios to, to, to what not and nothing seemed to get it right and it was like well I'm getting older it's just the body is breaking down. What can I do? I'm going to have to live with the pain. And you get into a depressed and maudlin place, don't you? And that continued for a while. Uh, and then, uh, out of a conversation with my stepmother, actually, um, where I was talking about, you know, in this way of just, you know, life is over, you know. I was 45 or 48 or whatever it was, 45. And she then recommended a, someone that she knew and they found me an osteopath who was really spot on. It's like when you open up to someone and you know are honest uh, about how you feel and uh, you know and, and just you just get stuff off your chest and you find someone trustworthy to talk about these things. It's often amazing how um, things can change for you. Anyway, this osteopath. I remember she, she like, I couldn't believe it. She made me like, I hesitate to say 100%, but you know, 95 plus percent completely better for like a period of seven, seven years. Um, and even now I, I, I get, when it's cold, I get, a, I feel a, a soreness, but I, I actually now play squash more competitively. Um, I would say better than I did when I was, uh, before I was injured. Um, and she said something interesting to me, which is that the body always wants to move towards a position of healing. It's always going in a direction of health and healing. Sure, the, your body gets older, um, but it's, if, if there's an injury, it always is looking to heal, up right up to the point of death. And, it, and she says, all my job is, it's a bit like screwing the cap on a bottle on the thread and it not catching the thread properly so it sticks. My job is to come in there and to, to figure out how to uh, un, uh, to, to fix, to, to loosen or whatever, the, uh, uh, the, the bottle cap. And then the body just does the rest of the work. It's not like I've had to do much. And I, um, I just think that mentally, it, I think it's a similar setup. More so, in fact, because in the mental realm, when you think about it, you don't have the body that's de that, that's decaying. You have uh, you just simply have a, a, a decision to go with I don't know the social conditioning about old age that when as you get older, you know you just get curmudgeonly, you don't you, you lose your love of life and your enthusiasm and your childlike quality. You know you have all of that all those ideas running. And those are the ideas that give you the, the hang-ups. There's no kind of like uh, black and white situation here and I'm sure you can think of examples of people who remain, uh, maintain their youthful vitality um, right up into the 60s, 70s and 80s. There are classic examples in the dating arena of old dudes doing this. Um, so the, so um, and I think that in the area of the sort of mental realm, the, the way to think about this, and, and, and in terms of sort of like suggestions, if you like, about kind of how to address these kind of mental limitations or hang-ups, I think the, the, um, the way to, uh, to kind of uh, address this is, is just, you know, 
again by thinking about it logically and reasonably and analytically. Now, here's an, a, a woo-woo idea for you. Reincarnation, okay? Let's say that it's not just one game and then that's it, yeah? Let, let, let's say you're a sportsman, you know, it's like you only have, 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 have one game. Now that might make you quite depressed and it, make, it might make you think that you can never improve because you've only got one chance. Um, and I think in terms of life, we think that we're players around a, a, a board game, or, well, the game of life, and there's a clock ticking and you've only got, you know, if you're getting towards the end of the game, you might as well give up because you're not going to win. People who believe in reincarnation say that you just go on having life after life after life after life. Now, for reasons um, I won't go into at this vlog anyway because of the limitations of time, I actually think reincarnation is, is, a, is, is likely. I, I wouldn't, um, it's not, I don't think it's crazy. I think it's far more, uh, makes far more better sense to me than the idea of a, of, of a heaven. That's clearly, you know, religion. Um, imposing a heaven on a society in order to get people to do, to do things and behave and behave nicely to each other, um, but I I do actually think there's a there is that does reincarnation does make sense to me simply because what I observe in people and in myself are these impediments that we have these limiting beliefs that we have and that really um, some of them are so unusual and strong. Uh, and kind of, you know, unique and odd that they kind of develop during the course of one lifetime. And I actually think there's an argument to say that we bring uh, our natures, yeah, from one life to another life to another life to another life. And, and that the um, kind of the great journey, spiritual journey of us all is to transcend our limits and to that's why we're here to become free from ignorance uh, limiting ideas limiting beliefs now if you imagined if you believed in reincarnation you'd probably approach this whole situation woman and dating with a, with a, with, with a, 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 a fresh perspective you'd be saying oh well I've got another dozen or well, uh, another couple hundred lives to come um, it's not over I might as well get back into the game and and play my damnness to, you know and try and win it because I've got a, I've got a you know I've got a, a, a plentiful abundance of opportunities to address uh, my own sort of spiritual growth which you know dating life absolutely around um, your own self-development um, now if you were to believe that you probably have a completely different attitude towards this this idea of too late mate wouldn't you um, you might also have a different attitude to to the game of life if you let's say I said to you, you've only got a week to live yeah you probably go absolutely crazy you become better than Casanova in, in a, you know by, by day four and you'd be sleeping with super hot girls by by Sunday night you know and you probably I mean you know think about it if you were if, if you're right um, against the wire there, well, I'll, I'll, let's give you three months, you would transform your life. Yeah, if you knew there was a cut-off point when you were going to be, um, when you were going to be uh, flutter off to a better place, you would change. Yeah? Wouldn't you? Yeah? You wouldn't sit in front of me moaning about, well, that guy can do it, but then he's got, he's better looking, or I don't know, he's got, I know he's the same age, but he's, he's obviously learnt something that I haven't got, you know. You would, oh, but fuck that. <laughs> you, you, you'd, be out of, you'd be out there approaching and dating girls like a dog out of the traps. So those two illustrations just give you um, examples to just illustrate the point that it is a phantom kind of weasel thought and it, and you know, procrastination is a classic villain, isn't it? That keep you um, from taking action, keep you from um, doing, you know, doing it now. 
making it happen now, making the changes now. Um, so, you know, I encourage you to kind of reflect and to reason if you are a more mature, more vintage dude who's suffering from Tulane Bates syndrome, I should trademark this, um, to consider whether it's really true, yeah? And to do that, as I say, by means of taking action to test whether there's truthfulness, um, by chatting with dudes that you respect and advice you value, having the courage to talk about your, the difficulties that you're facing, um, and uh, yeah, and you know, to do your own self-reflection, writing a journal or you know, producing a video channel, but above all, to do the work because it is sort of subtle mental work. Just as I was getting ready to do, do this video, I was like, it's a Sunday afternoon, uh, it's getting dark, it's cold, I've uh, probably got a little bit of coronavirus coming on or something, feeling a bit run down, you know. Um, but I was like, yeah, I want to meet my mates, I want to say hello to you guys, and that positive idea of, let's, but let's just keep producing these videos, keep reflecting on these, these questions and refreshing, you know, helping myself as much as I'm helping you. Um, it requires work, but it don't require much work. It just requires a little bit of mental effort. Just take an hour, an hour and a half to go out and do something, take action, pick up the phone, produce a YouTube video or whatever is your thing. Okay guys, well, I hope you found that, uh, what's the word, thought provoking, because I want to provoke you about where you are now and the limiting beliefs that you have. And uh, I'd be delighted to hear from guys who are, you know, suffering from too late mate syndrome. And let's do a podcast about it. Here you go, there's a challenge, do it for free. Okay guys, strap on those balls and uh, look forward to vlogging to you uh, in a week's time.